When I say the word sex trafficking, what comes to mind? Maybe a global issue happening way over there, someone's horrible problem but not ours. Or maybe you think of the movie Taken, or that crazy white van that everyone fears of their children getting abducted into. But what if I were to tell you that sex trafficking is not merely an international issue, but it's one happening right here in your own backyard, hidden in plain sight. What if I were to tell you that right now you're sitting in the top five city in America for our own children, our own American children, to be bought and sold for sex? Human trafficking, sex trafficking in America, it's a $32 billion industry. But yet, it is shrouded in secrecy. It's not spoken of. And if there's one secret I'm determined to expose tonight, it's that sex trafficking in America has one single root cause, and it's preventable. So you might wonder, what is this? Let me tell you that stats tell us 92% of survivors have experienced this route. But even worse than that, the truth is, one out of three little girls in America are experiencing this route, and one out of five of our little boys. The root of sex trafficking in America? Childhood sexual abuse. Yeah. Do you know that one out of three of little girls in America are being sexually abused today? And one out of five little boys. In other countries, it's poverty. That's the root. Not here. I'm going to help you understand why sexual abuse is the grooming and the gateway to sex trafficking, because it's related and people don't quite understand. So we can illustrate that by sharing a story about a little girl named Amanda. And Amanda was raised in a town very much like this, an affluent suburb. She was enrolled in dance by the age of three with all of her girlfriends, went on to enjoy all the little sports that our kids do, even made honor roll. But what nobody knew about Amanda is that she was carrying a very dark secret. From the time she was two or three years old, her uncles started abusing her, sexually abusing her. And yes, this was happening in her community that everybody knew one another, and her family all sat together in the front row of church every Sunday. No one had any idea. Amanda's abuse continued, and as the stats will tell us, by 12 to 14, there's typically a breaking point. A child told to hold this dark secret of childhood sexual abuse has something happened by 12 to 14 where they just have to break away. For some of them, it's just emotional. They have to do something to emotionally separate. In others, it's physical. Some will act out. Many become extremely promiscuous. And some run away. For those that run away, let me tell you what happens in your own backyard. Because you need to know that abuse, it doesn't care what neighborhood you live in. That one out of three is everywhere. So a little girl that can't handle it anymore, in our program, the youngest was 11, that said, whatever is out there has got to be better than what happens in my bedroom every night. So they run away, homeless, scared, confused. Within 48 hours, 80% of American runaways will be approached to be coerced into the sex trade. And do you know all that it takes? A few lines golden lines, like, are you hungry? I bet you need a place to stay tonight. And with that, a little girl longing for a covering, finally, will go right into this predator's arms, where she will remain sold for sex 15 to 40 times a day. That is a real number for up to seven years. I can tell you as a clinician, over the last 17 years, I have seen sexual abuse at the root of so many symptoms. So it should come as no surprise that it's the root of sex trafficking as well. But here is the big reveal. It's preventable if we would get ahead of it. 
Childhood sexual abuse is preventable with intervention in three key ages and stages, 8, 12, and 18. But for the sake of helping you understand it a little bit more, I'm going to talk you through Amanda's story without that intervention and the story of a boy named Troy. Everybody has a boy next door in their neighborhood and how Troy unknowingly plays a significant role in Amanda's flight, plight of sex trafficking. He's unknowing to the entire process. So you see images like this in your neighborhood all the time, little kids hanging out. But what you might not know is that by the time they are eight, 80% 80 of little boys are already exposed to pornography. Eight years old. And this is his first foray, foray into the world of sex trafficking. It is conditioning his mind to think that women and girls and images are just there as objects, somehow to look at. And you compound this with his developmentally very young brain. And he can't quite compute what's happening because he sees it. He knows this can't be good. I've done something wrong. But yet it's exciting and it feels really good. And right there, 80% of our little boys, by the age of eight, are introduced to a world of internal conflict and secrets. Meanwhile, Amanda, age eight, by this age of abuse, her uncles are just getting more and more. And she has become her own solid secret keeper. Little girls and boys that are abused will often protect their abusers because they're confused. In Amanda's case, though, she's keeping the secret for extra reasons, because her uncles say, hey, you don't like it? You want to tell? We'll move on to your little sister. By the time these two girls, a girl and boy in separate communities, are moving on to middle school, more starts to happen. For Amanda, she's now the sweet age of 12. But the kids at school, they don't refer to her as so sweet. They've started to call Amanda the school slut. They call her a whore. What they don't know is that her uncles have now brought it up a notch. They are now videoing her, and they are putting pictures of her on the internet for all to see. Meanwhile, Troy, our boy next door, he has honed his secret compulsion. He has learned how to find porn, hide it in a secret folder on his phone. His parents will never find. Both of these kids are in your community. In porn, what we don't know is that it is a $92 billion industry. And little girls like Amanda are losing themselves as they are forced to pose for vulgar positions and endure abuse. She's losing her identity. She's losing her value. And she has no way out. As they progress to high school, they're now seniors. Amanda's gotten really good at playing two roles, which many girls in this stage of trafficking do. They learn how to pose for the camera, become whoever they need to in sex, and still try to show up whenever they can to keep up appearances and not have everyone know what's really happening with their life. And you know what, in her situation, her uncles have found a new thing for her. They're making her now dance at their buddy's strip club. And do you know what? If Amanda does not do what they tell her and have taught her to do in that back room, when she gets home, they hurt her. Meanwhile, Troy, our boy next door, he's elated. Not only did they have a great season his senior year, but do you know he just turned 18 and what his buddies did for him? They bought him a girl. Troy had not even heard of a strip club. He had no idea. But his buddies went all out. They bought him the VIP backroom treatment. Rite of passage, manhood, check. Troy and his friends have no idea that they are contributors to the dark world of sex trafficking. They have no idea. 
I will hear people say all the time, but I don't understand. Come on, the girl's choosing it. The money I give her, I'm helping her go to college. I will have men say that to me again and again. And I will say to them, many of them fathers, you know what, let's do an experiment. Give me your daughter for three months. I will put her in a club and we'll see how it helps her with her college career and her identity. I've yet to have a taker. I can only speak from experience. This year, of the 900 women that we have worked with to date, many, the majority will come in and say, hey, I chose this life. This is you know, who I am with their hard facade in place. But after a little bit of time, a little bit of healing, finally walking into having their identity restored, each girl, as they come to terms with what was actually stolen, starting way back here in their childhood, and the progression of what really happened, they grieve. They grieve when they come to terms with what is stolen. I can only tell you that this is preventable. And I don't want to leave you here, right? This is horrible. But I want to give you hope. Because research is true. Intervention, proper intervention, at any or prior to those ages of 8, 12, and 18 is highly effective. So if you go back and you think, prior to age 8, what we need is for every person to be talking to their little children, starting two, three, four years old, telling boys, hey, guess what? The internet, it's going to be all over you. It's going to be every part of your life. And you will see naked women and naked boys. And they will be doing crazy things, because you should see what's on the web. And help them understand, you don't have to keep it a secret, honey. Everybody sees it. You're going to stumble upon it. And we'll just talk about it. You normalize it right there at the root. Cut it off at the root. Little girls, start talking to them. Any little girl needs to hear. There is no such thing as a child needing to keep an adult secret. Children are not designed to keep secrets for adults. And if anything is confusing or hard to understand, making you feel uncomfortable, you can share it. And what if, by middle school, every single teacher, youth leader, that's given the privilege to work with our 12 to 14 year olds, what if they were equipped with the truth that there's no such thing as a promiscuous middle schooler? That hypersexualization is learned and they need to look again. It's time for teachers to know to look again instead of chastising and punishing that child rather to reach out to them. And what if by high school, intentional situations were created for every junior and senior so we could disarm them before they go to college? We are often given this opportunity to speak to juniors and seniors in high school. And especially, I love when we get to go to affluent private schools. And you come in with this message, very simple. You just start talking to them about secrets. And you know what? They love it, because they have questions. When you start sharing about pornography and what it does to the brain, the boys want to know. They're like, well, what do you mean? You know, what does it mean if I'm addicted? How do I know if I'm addicted to porn? And we say, hey, you know what? If you ever say to yourself, I've been looking at a lot of porn lately, I think I'm going to take a day off. And by 10 AM that day, you're just sneaking a peek. Chances are you're getting into some addictive behavior. They laugh and raise their hand like, holy crap, I'm addicted. All of them, these little high school boys, and they want to know more. And you know what? The most recent time we did this, there was 86 juniors and seniors. And we said to them, hey, you have the opportunity to keep this stuff inside. Or you could just come up and tell us. Let's talk about it. What are you hiding? Because if you go to college, we need to tell you now, the secrets you're leaving with, it's going to take more and more secrets to keep them covered. That day, we had 27 of the 86 students, fluent private high school, come forward and share with us about rape, abuse, addictions, other unspeakables. And they, that day, received intervention so they could go to college unburdened. 
And you know what? The boys were intrigued because they wanted to understand the chemistry of the brain and what happens, what we've learned from research, that repetitive viewing of pornography and bonding with images, which is actually bonding with nothing. You were designed to bond with something. That that leads to insatiable, needing more sexually, out of control. And that is why we see sex trafficking rings today being busted. And men 18 to 80 are being arrested, coming to have sex with a child. You guys just had one in Naperville, huge sex trafficking ring busted. And these men are questioned, and again and again they say, I don't know what happened. Somewhere I crossed over from like viewing porn to needing to buy more and more. So this is preventable, and the beautiful thing is there's a lot we can do to help. So I'm not going to leave you with all this information because it's a little much, right? Yeah, but what I'm going to do rather is arm you. I'm going to arm you right now with three quick things that you could take with you. How many of you have ever given a phone to a child in your life? Anybody? Everybody, there you go. Did you go into settings in general and set your code? If you did not, I want you to understand what you gave your child. Phones come loaded, preloaded, to the most explicit levels of content. You are to go in there and set the levels to make them age appropriate. This is fabulous. A recent study from the American Academy of Pediatrics has just revealed that today, 75% of four-year-olds are given cell phones. And if you are not setting the level of content on your child's phone, you're giving them a portal to debauchery. So there's one. Two, have a talk. Just any kid in your life, go home today. Share about this. Share about this talk. Tell them what you learned. And third, this one's a little more personal. It's for your own journey. Just take a moment. Think about the people you've known. Has there been an Amanda in your life that now you see differently? And you missed an opportunity to be an advocate? And you wish maybe now that you know, you could go back and apologize? Because you know what? Sex trafficking's happening. It's here. You're sitting in the top five city. And you know what? It's time. You are now equipped. You're an advocate. You are ready to eradicate the root. So I leave you with this. This is my charge to you today. Fight. Fight for every Troy and Amanda that you know. And ultimately, our goal, put me out of business. Thank you.